Well, that's a bit of a panic. Hang on. I, uh, <laughs> just, hello everyone. I just had a right panic because everything went technically wrong seconds before going live. So I think we're all right, but I'm a bit flustered because I nearly fell over my laptop. Everything went wrong. It might be, if it's too loud, let me know. Um, how are you going everyone? Yay, you're there. Has everyone got their popcorn? <laughs> it's going to be a long one. Oh my God, it looks a bit loud actually. I might bring it down a bit. Hang on. Let's see if we, we need to bring this down a bit. Um, but let me know because I've got, I've got new things again. I've spent all my money again. Uh, so this has got a well, I couldn't bear it last time when a few people said, oh, you're only coming out of one speaker and I tried everything and I just, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to um, invest, finally invest in my lovely radio mic, which was about a thousand US dollars. Uh, but it's going to be worth it, right? You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Uh, volume seems okay, good. There might be a little bit of room here, so I'm, I'm messing around with levels. I've been messing around with levels for three days. God, this is so boring. What a way to start, but there you go. Uh, so, how are you? Uh, just have a little read before we get going. Hi, everyone. Al Yaz. It's not Al Yaz, is it? Al Yaz. Um, all jazz, it, it, it's spelt like. Um, he sent me his uh, DVD to watch this this week and it's been great. I watched it this week. So thanks for that. We'll do a review on it. That's not your review, but just want to give you a shout out. Thanks for doing that. And thanks for, I do get quite a lot of things sent to me from people and I'm trying to get through everything. I'm really struggling. I've started watching stuff on the exercise bike in the morning at the gym. Um, and, and that's really helping. Then I kind of rewatch it quickly once I've watched it all the way through. So I'm finding ways of doing every, everything. So, uh, right. So we'll do, a bit of, I've got a, a couple of questions that I got sent in the week that I think are interesting. We'll do this review of Cinemental uh, at the beginning. Well, it's kind of, it's a review, it's not going to be a very long review, I don't think. It, it kind of does what it says and there's not a great deal to say on it, but we'll, but we'll show you. As, um, let me know, thanks, oh yes. uh, let me know it, who's got this and who's played with Ah, oh, no, I think it's on pre-release, isn't it, if I'm right, because I got it last week. So, I, I got this and did my thing of, this is what I love doing now. I love not watching any of the trailers and not knowing what the trick is. I just see if there's a buzz about it and see if things are being said and then I order it and I, I try and watch it as a lay person, not as a lay person, as a kind of, as a magician that doesn't know what it is sort of thing. So I sit down, I watch the, the trick and then make a judgment on the trick like a lay person. And then that will give me an idea of how long I want to spend on it. So my first impressions of uh, Cinemental were when I saw, I watched it last night performed it today uh, with with no crib so which was interesting which was actually an important point so I watched this and did not have a clue literally no idea there's two phases to this routine the first phase is you get someone to cut the that you show them that all the cards are different and these cards have movies on them I'll show them to you actually it comes in a really nice little thing as well um, you know little Hello. Um, which I opened the wrong way there. And they're, they're a really nicely printed deck of cards. They're uh, US Playing Card Company and they are really nice. They, they feel like they're going to last. Very important that they're not kind of thick, cheap stock. I, I, I like that. Um, so these are the... I don't know what the focus is going to do. It might get confused. Uh, but these are the films and then they're all classic films. Um, and you show them to be all different. Okay. And then they cut the pack, hold on, and, and then you turn your back. This is really, this is a bit that I couldn't get my head around, right? You turn your back and then the whole trick happens and you do the whole thing pretty much with your back turned. So they cut the pack, they look at the card they've cut to, which is, there's not a repeat or anything like that in there. Um, and the other cards they put in their pocket, so you have no idea how many cards they've got. They put them in their pocket, the rest of them, they then shuffle them after they've looked at the card they cut to and then hand them to you. You do a little thing, you can still keep looking away and saying you have one more look, see your cards, and there's no extra ones. Uh, and then you tell them what their movie is, which I think is absolutely brilliant. I, it, I had literally no idea. Now, some people that are maybe into certain kinds of tricks, less slight heavy tricks, might have had an idea, but I just didn't see it at all. And then there's this other phase where you get them to, you give them some more cards, um, or you can do a switch, something like that. Um, they, they deal down face up, 
and they stop wherever they like, and then you've predicted what they're going to stop out on a bit of paper that's been put on the table, even at the beginning of the trick, maybe, the whole thing. So that's an, an, another phase. So the good points are, it, I had no idea. I think it's a really nice trick. I'm a, I'm a movie buff, so I did it to my friend James this morning, who knows I'm a movie buff, so I go, I like movies, so this was totally justified that I'd have these things. I've got these special deck cards that, that have movies on. Um, all the films are, are classics, so there's not really any weird ones on there. So there's a little bit of, if you want to play it one way, there's a little bit of memory work. And when I say that, I looked at it last night before going to bed. And by the time I fell asleep, I'd remembered what I had to remember. I think part of it because I created a mnemonic that made sense. So I could remember each thing. Um, I wasn't panicking because there is a way of, it's cribbed. So that's good. And it just seems to be a really easy thing to remember. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm a, a film head and I could remember little things to remind me. But I found it very, very easy to remember. But you don't need the memory work, right? You can take this out and do it pretty much straight away. I will say the second phase of it is quite bold and that is if you, the, the first phase you're not going to get caught out. And to be honest, I think that this is good enough just to do the first phase. I'm not sure the second phase is, is I just like that first one so much. It's so pure. It's like you're doing the whole thing back turn. So to, to do this other bit feels a little bit disjointed to me, maybe, but maybe not because I did it twice. The first time, my friend I did it to clocked me a little bit on it. And if you're going to get caught on everything, that is where you're going to get caught. But I genuinely think it's because he knew me. He, he kind of knows, he doesn't know much about magic, but he kind of hasn't got that natural nervousness a, a, an audience member would have. Then I performed it to someone I didn't know and it completely fl flew. And, but, but it is a little bit bolder if you want to perform it a certain way, if you really want to go for it. But there are ways of covering it where you're definitely, definitely not going to get caught. So it's... A really strong trick. It feels different. Yes, it's a kind of a card trick, um, but it's got these lovely movie cards. It, they've been designed by Phil Smith. I'm really glad I remembered that. He comes up everywhere, doesn't he? Because he's so good. He's, they look really good. He's put a lot of work into the imagery. They look like a really funky, trendy deck of cards that aren't tacky. That's the important thing for me. With my, if I get out something that just looks tacky, even though I love doing sponge balls every now and then, but it's got to be the right gig. <laughs> it's got to look a bit tacky with your pocket fluff on them. But um, I, I like the fact that they're, they're really nicely done. So really nicely been put together. Um, I want to get the pronunciation right. Uh, I think it's Nicolas uh, Mavrasis. I think it's Mavrasis. Um, but he's done a really good job. I think it's a great trick. I think it's going to fool everyone, especially that first bit and the second bit. It really is. But just nobody's going to have a clue. And that first bit is the easiest bit. It's super easy. And when I found out it was done, I went, that's just brilliant. I just think it's brilliant. What I will say, it, this isn't going to give anything away, it feels like it is a kind of a mem deck trick without having to do a mem deck. You, it's, not, it's not the same, but that's when I realised there were possibilities with this, that actually this is the trick, and like he says at the end of the, the uh, download, you can do this with it, you can do this with it, and you go, yeah, absolutely, I, you can do so much with it. So that's my preference, would be to stay with that method and expand that rather than maybe uh, do the second one. But I'm going to play with it again. I will be putting the... I ran out of time today because I've got had this technical problem. So I will be putting the, um, the performance of this on either this, probably this evening, probably straight after this. I'll edit that and get it up uh, if it looks OK. But I was trying out the new mic, so who knows. Um, so that's it. Really, nothing really bad to say about this. I mean, it's really good, and I think you're going to like it. No angles, anything like that. You can do it completely surrounded. And I think it would play quite big as well, actually, because you can just describe, you know, look at all the cards. They're all different and, and et cetera. So you could play it. Um, yeah, you could, you could play it really big. Right, so let's uh, have a look at the questions. Uh, it seems okay. Hello, everyone. Perfect time. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Colin. What's your favourite movie? That's a good one. Would it work, uh, phase two, then followed by the first phase? Yeah, I think it would, really. I, 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 they do feel like separate, but they, maybe they only feel separate because I've only, done, I've only done it a couple of times. Because it feels to me like a lot of the feedback from the pros has been that it really works, that kicker at the end, that thing. Um, so you're doing a, you're naming it, and then you're doing a prediction. So it does tie in. So I think it would work either way. Absolutely, you can definitely do the first. The good thing about the first bit is that I think it's better to do the first bit because it's more examinable. So they've got this feeling ahead that I've held them. They're 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 all you know. So so that it gives it a fairer feeling. That's the only reason for doing the first bit first. Um, uh, you got mine as well. You got name right. Yay! 
Yeah, that's because that's because I asked you to. Hi guys, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed this one. Murphy's Magic. Yeah, you know, and and a big I forget to do this quite often, so I'm really glad you're on here. Murphy send me stuff every month, and Murphy's have sent me stuff. The people that like Vanishing send me stuff. Murphy send me stuff. I'm not affiliated to any of these people. It's all independent, which is really cool of them, really, isn't it? Because they know that I can. I have said a couple of things that aren't amazing about some tricks, but without those people and the independent people like Phil Smith and Al Yaz, and I know I'm getting that last letter wrong, um, Al Yaj uh, has sent me stuff. Without that, I really can't do this. I can't afford to buy it, so so I really appreciate it. But I still want the code by Fennec. I can't get it. I have bought this week. Um, this, God, I'm going to be single soon. I've bought the... Um, Steve Forte books, and then I bought the Helder Gimarez book because I got panicked that they're going to run out, and then I bought the As I Win book because he had 100 left and I, I just couldn't bear it. Um, and then I justified it by saying I was going to review it, so I've got it now, even though they've all, all been out a while. So um, if I don't review them, I, I'll get in trouble. See you at Blackpool, absolutely. The cost of this trick, I don't know, you know, uh, have a look, at, have a Google because it's a pre-release. So Murphy's might be able to chip in if they're still here, if, if they could give us a cost of this trick. Uh, Nicholas, did I get your name right? Boom, oh, I'm right on it today. Uh, he says, I would suggest, you well, you can read this, but for those people watching it later that won't be able to see this, um, I'm not suggesting the second phase. The reason the second phase works well is because they've already seen the examine the movie cards. Absolutely, yeah, that's j totally what I said. I did it at 34 95 I think it's totally worth it, it's fine. It's, it's giving you five minutes of, in, um, of info here. Green sleeves, I'll come on to your question in a minute that you gave me last time. Um, I did, and, and what happens is after that first phase, they're, they're responding, so there's two choices. There's a great way of just handing them the rest of the cards, as if they're just the rest of the cards, and then do it. I actually did, found it loads of time to switch out, so I was just chatting away, I did a thing like that. I copped these, it wasn't even a cop, it was like, if you looked at it, you'd seen it. Uh, and hand them back, and then they did this, the same thing. So, it, so that they're they're sort of disarmed. And you're absolutely right. Yeah, thank you for that. And and it's great to have you here. Um, right. So, if if any more questions, I'll come back to that. Um, it, it's totally got my. And like I said, even though Murphy sent me stuff, I'm not affiliated. It's so so important that I that, that I wouldn't say this. I probably wouldn't do a live review on it if I didn't like it. To be honest, because I don't want to sit here slating stuff. Um, I'll save that to the stuff that I record. But yeah, it really liked it so i'm going to go on to some of these questions green sleeves a reset like yeah totally fine uh you could you could uh, i could have done with maybe a little bit on more on that in the um in the download but to be no it kind of does itself it's fine you haven't got to, you haven't got to worry absolutely fine for strolling it obviously takes a bit of time there's a tiny bit of process so it needs to be the right strolling strolling environment um because it's not quick quick but it's like any mentalism isn't it it's it's You've got a kind of... So I was looking down there instead of the camera. Um, right. This is from Billy. I'm going to do Billy's question. I, like this. He emailed me and said, um, I'm trying to force myself to go out and perform some magic to people I don't know, but I lack self-confidence. I've so, I've so been here, man. Honestly, I have huge issues like this. And I still do sometimes. I know that I can do the tricks because I've been practicing. You can do them, completely nail them. Even when I show family uh, tricks, my handshake to no end. I was wondering if you could talk about it. Right. First thing is, the, the, there's, a, there's a learning cycle, a learning process you go through. We all know this. You go through, you, you, you get the, the trick and you can't do it. And then you go through a process. And if you stick with it and stick with it and stick with it and stick with it, you will get to an unconscious competence point where you can do the trick without thinking about it with your hands. That's kind of a physicality of it. Then there's the performing of the trick. And I always say the performing of the trick's got to be treated like a whole different learning process. Because if you, if you can nail it at home, you take it out and it feels totally different and it's like you can't do it. That's really, that can really put people off doing it. I know people that have quit because of that. And, and with stand-up and things like that, you know, they, they, they get there, they know they're set, they know it's funny, they've done it in front of a director or, or a friend and they're laughing and then they take it out and the timing's all off and it doesn't get a laugh and they give up and they think this isn't for me. There's got, you've got to work through this horrible, awful period of, of with, and I still get this with a lot of tricks, not as bad as I used to, of going out and it just feeling horrible and maybe not like it's good and, and a handshake. And that is something that I still get. If I take a trick, I would try and perform all the tricks I review. So I took Cinemento out this morning after looking at it last night before bed. 
And I was nervous, right? If it had been a slight trick, I'd probably been a bit shaky. Not as much as I used to be, but it would have been there. Family and friends, man, I'm like that. I can't do it because I can't get into performance mode. I can't, I, I'm me. I'm, I'm totally, I'm, I'm naked. No, I'm not literally naked. That would be horrific. But I'm, I'm, I'm totally there and I'm me and I can't be hide, hide behind the gags because they're kind of going, why are you talking like that? I can't hide behind this direction because they know my mannerisms even subconsciously. So I just do not bother with family and friends now, unless we're at a dinner and it's something that I just know I don't have to think about. I can bang out an ambitious card or whatever, but something that I'm still having to think about. I will do it to, to test it out, which is I'll talk about in a minute with optics, which is very interesting. But I know that it's going to be awful the first couple of times. And actually, a lot of the performances I've done of these tricks have really not been great. Um, because I know I go out and I'm not practiced. So Billy, the, the first thing I'll say is, you're not on your own. I, I was literally in the toilet being sick when I did my first street shows in Covent Garden, and I did 10 years of that, and I, for a while I nailed that. I was a, very good at that, and I'm not saying that because I was talented, I was saying it because I did years and years. I died on my ass for five years doing it. I used to feel physically sick, I used to shake, I used to go through that, but I promise you, if you just keep doing it, it will get better. What I will say is you learn to use that nervous energy. You learn to, to sort of befriend it in a way and and even though it's not very nice sometimes you know it's there and you know what it is and you kind of trust the process enough so because that nervousness doesn't mean you're not you're not going to be very good you, you've got to find a way of that we're, we're made up of thoughts emotions and actions okay the, the action is anything we see anything we we communicate so the action is the shaking hands the, the treat you're doing or whatever the thoughts and the emotions will affect the action. It all affects each other. It's like cognitive behavioral therapy. So what I do is I try and block out the thoughts and the, the emotions when I'm performing something. So I know they're there, but I've got various things I do to, to make myself not think really, to go down that path. You know, it, there's no point because if you, there's a book called Bounce by Matthew Said about practice, which I really recommend reading. When he says that people that are going for gold medal in the Olympics, you know, if they're there thinking, I've got to do this properly, I've got to think of everything, they're dead. They, just, they do all the training, they do what they can do, and then they enjoy themselves. And that's what I'd say, enjoy yourself. If a trick goes wrong, it doesn't matter. You're not getting paid loads of money yet. If you want to perform, and I know everybody says this, and it's a very hard thing to do, find somewhere and say, look, can I come in and do a few tricks? I'm practicing, be honest, I'm, go I'm going pro, I'm thinking of going pro and I need to practice in front of an audience. I'll come and can I walk around your bar or what? I don't know how old you are, but walk around, go into school, do something and be honest and they will love you for it, man. They don't go, it, the worst thing people do is they go in cocky and be like, eh, when they're not feeling great, just be yourself, be honest and, and I swear you'll get there, mate. It's, it's, a, it's a really tough one, but once you, you do it, you'll absolutely love it. You'll find your character and just, just accept it takes time. Uh, right, so I hope that's helped. Um, I tried before you buy magic trick. Yeah, why did you start doing street? How much time did you put into developing the skills before hitting the street? Um, I started doing the street in about ninety. Well, I did busking before that in about ninety four, I think. Um, so yeah, twenty when I was twenty, uh, twenty one, and then I I did a bit of busking. I was in standing there with a hat juggling. Old Street Tube Station and in, in Exeter, um, and then I, be, I went started at Covent Garden Street performing. A couple of years after that, I went to circus school in in London and needed to earn more money, so I started doing a double act, and then started on my own and died really badly for years. And the skill was I had the tricks. Tricks never changed, all right? Not really. The skill was understanding that it was about it was about the way I communicated and got rapport with an audience. So that is exactly the same as close up. That's why for me it was probably a lot easier doing close-up because I understood the importance of rapport. And that rapport, by the way, isn't anything complicated. It takes years to understand how to be yourself. And, and, and hopefully what comes across in these videos is that I try, well, there's a paradox, isn't it? Because I try to be myself, but I, I almost don't try. If, if you try too hard, you know, you, you see those people that go up to tables of, there might be a table of 20 year olds and they'll be like, good evening, gentlemen. And it's like, Whoa. What's that? You know, that, no, people don't talk like that. Unless you're playing a character, or unless you have a specific character that kind of fits that, I, I get it. But the more you can just communicate as a flawed human being, you know, which is why when you get the odd thing wrong, and, and, you, and you're cool about it, they'll be cool about it, and they'll kind of, 
it, it's kind it's not you know we, none of us want to do it but it just gives you that it helps you relax a little bit so yeah that's a so i think if it's it's loads and loads and loads of dying on my ass understanding that when i died on my ass it did guess what nobody died except for my ego um and that kind of goes after a while as well uh, so that's yeah that was that was that th- those streak skills just developed and developed and never it was always practice for me and and, and still is really um so I'm, oh yeah just a quick one like subscribe um i haven't done my checkout carbmagiccourse.com after this would be lovely uh, i've just started recording my royal road to car magic uh, course you'll see the bottom of my poster up there which i'm so excited about i'm really delving into that book and exploring it um and not just you know teaching everything out of it but looking at where we go so harapan ong has just given me permission to teach his version of poker plays picnic which is oh just isn't that lovely i'm glad i do what i do because i get permission to do stuff like that uh right so green sleeves i'm going to look at your your uh your oh god where is it there it is okay uh, so difficult you say it is to get into a position of doing this for a living if you don't have a TV gig I've never had a TV gig so that's alright um, is it mainly running the courses that serving you best that way with, with money so he's asking me whether I make my most of my money through gigs or through doing this or, well not through this but the, um, the car magic courses it doesn't sound nosy at all I hope, hope it doesn't sound nosy um, they're, they're important questions before I invest what might be a lot of time and effort at trying to up my skill level okay so we'll start at the beginning. How difficult would you say getting into a position of doing this for a living? Do you know what? I think it's one of the easiest things to do. If you think about being a doctor, right? Let's take, I always think of that one, years. Right? Years and years. And I know we all practice for years and do all that. But we practice kind of on our own terms, right? We don't have to sit in a room for nine hours a day and do that. And if we did that for five or six years, we'd be amazing. The way you do it, I would say, is to... Look, last week I did this thing about the best five tricks to take on a close-up gig. So get that sorted first. Get five tricks that you can, as we talked about earlier, you can do without thinking about it. It doesn't mean they're going to be great when you take them out for the first time. That definitely might not happen. But five tricks you know you can do a gig with. The biggest problem, I remember doing this on the street. I did my first street show and I had five juggling balls, three clubs, straight jacket. By the time I'd done it, like I said, for a bit, I did a, I did a cigarette vanish, you know. That was, that was the first 10 minutes of my show, building the crowd. Uh, I did three balls of juggling. I cut out the five balls, of everything like that, because it, I just had to be funny. And that's what I did with the three balls, finished with a straight jacket. 45-minute show, three tricks. All right, straight jacket was boring, but it was funny because it was funny. You know, the actual thing itself. Someone said to me, the hardest thing it is, is keeping the thing on, you know, because the chain's around you. So um, you, you, you get that sorted. And I think, remember, if you've got five tricks, you can do really well. Classics, you know, chop cut. You know, like I said, went, went into this last time. There's no reason. You don't have to be hilariously funny. You don't have to be really, like, sharp. If you can do those tricks and at the end they don't know how they've done, that is the basis for you becoming a professional magician. And as I said before, just a minute ago, with Billy's question was that once you can do that, then the rest will come treat that as the same learning process. So, yeah, when you go a pro, don't overcharge so you don't feel like they're going to get your, their money's worth. But, you know... Go out, do the thing, get some footage, watch yourself, you know, do that uncomfortable stuff. But you don't have to, I didn't, but it, it helps. Um, and get genuine feedback off people, you know, really important. When you do something for someone, email them and say, look, I really need some genuine feedback. I haven't been doing this for long. Or you don't, if you don't want to tell them that, that's fine. But get that feedback and ask for negative feedback. You know, is there anything you'd like to see improved upon? Was there anything you noticed? And, and if you can find those confidants, those people that can be totally honest with you, it'll help. But... Now, I was shocking on my first few close-up gigs, absolutely shocking. And I did a gig once. I went to a gig, which is what made me want to do it, I think, in Australia. And I could do a couple of tricks, this story when I was in Australia running this shop, but I was a juggler. And someone said, come to a gig with me. He walked around all night doing the floating match, you know, the original one on the card. That's pretty much all he did. And he still got paid and they were happy. Not saying you should do that. It was shocking. But you can get away with a lot. And you shouldn't, but what I will say is don't spend too much time in the practice room. When you can do the tricks, get them out there, be a nice person, and they'll love you for it, all right? So that's, it, it's super easy, I think, to do as a living. There's not that many people doing it. The hard thing is, is being proactive. And just, I know I'm talking a lot, but I think it's important. I had an agent, when I, I, while I moved to Sheffield, I had an agent in London, 
Uh, not a soul agent, just someone that got me gigs. And then when I moved to Sheffield, I did juggler and stuff. I moved to Sheffield, became a magician. I, I was saying, um, running around the agents, saying I want to be uh, in, on your books. And they put me on the books and nobody got me any gigs. And I, didn't, and I remember thinking, oh, the agents are blaming the agents. And then I read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Habit two, be proactive. I think it's habit two. Maybe it's habit one. Um, be proactive is is just about actually don't wait don't be don't wait for things to happen for you to respond to them make them happen and that was a real uh, changer for me game changer when I did that I found I've got to get my own gigs I've got so I started ringing people I started phoning people I also read a book called How to Be Brilliant by Michael Apple which is amazing but it gave me that sort of different way of thinking about things. Um, and I put myself in that uncomfortable position and did exactly what I'm talking about. I phoned people up and turned up and wasn't very good and all that, but it made, it started working because I did it a lot. Uh, so, so do that, do that. Yes, do the website, get all that stuff, but don't forget that you'll get your work through turning up and people seeing you. That's where all my work comes from. I get nothing through my website. I'm invisible on Google. Um, so no, I get loads of work. <laughs> I'm doing this all the time. So in answer to your other question, uh, I get no, I, I make the Card Magic course at the moment, I'm totally transparent about this, really makes me very little profit because I have to pay so much out, I've just invested in the mic and the camera. Um, that is a long-term strategy for me, it's a, it's a labour of love. My dream is to one day make these videos, help people out, teach people, help people be creative and do the leadership training I do, which is basically helping people do what I did and think a different way. Um, and the business coaching, which isn't with big businessmen, it kind of is, but it's more about helping people. It's all about helping people and sort of, for want of a better phrase, unlocking their potential by them talking to you and hearing your stories and, and doing all that stuff. Uh, I'll always perform, but I'd quite happily never do a 50 table close up gig again in my life. Um, my after dinner shows is probably, after dinner shows um, and the training that I'm doing, especially in Norway and stuff at the moment, and is what's bringing in my money. But for years it was just a performing and there's no reason why you can't do it. Right, I hope that's helpful. Um, any other questions, do let me know. Let's have a look. Uh, sorry about this, I know this is a bit dull when I go off screen, but... How long is too long for a single card trick? Well, let's do that one in a minute. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I can always tell the audience is going to be low just by looking at them. Good night. Brilliant. Uh, he looked at the audience one night and decided, nah, they just don't look right, and walked off stage. Uh, and there is such thing as a bad audience. Some people say, no such thing as a bad audience, it's the entertainer. Absolute nonsense. There is such thing as a bad audience, there's loads of them. <laughs> don't stop beating yourself up. Uh, I've 10 years just got extreme bad and having fun, but it's great. But always nervous when I approach someone for the first time. Absolutely, let's go through this again, right? I'm nervous when I approach someone. I'm myself when I do a new trick. I, it's just fear. And this is what I wanted to tell you earlier. Um, I, <laughs> I did the optics thing. Optics is just, you, you, it's terrifying me. What I've learned, I tried it with my friend this morning. Did I get away with it? No, not at all. He, he saw every, everything. He saw everything from there. So what I'll say about that is, he knows he's looking for stuff. So he knows I'm trying something out. I fumbled on a couple of bits, um, but it was bright in his office, bright, I'm right next to him and it didn't go well and we laughed about it and he's my confidant he, he has said to me he'll look at my stuff he'll never tell anybody it's, it's, it's fine he's kind of my, become a little bit of a friend of mine my friend James uh, sorry he's a friend of mine he's become a little bit of a kind of looking at my stuff because I think it's important to have that but I walked away from that and he told me exactly what and I knew what I had to do differently I knew where I had to look I knew at what point I had to heavily get the heat off something to get eye contact and hand them their phone around here and where I had to turn it around maybe before I get, so I learned so much from that one experience. So be ready to fail and but get feedback off the of failure. Show friends and be, accept that you don't, that you get it wrong, fine. Ask them, you know, grill them about it. What did you see? Where did, what did you think at that point? Where were you looking? Uh, so really, really important. So I look forward to doing that again and dying on my ass. Just join, we've been Blackpool. Um, yeah, I, I can't look, yeah, how, how long's a card trick? I'll have a look in a minute. Um, what are you benching? Very little, just 20 on each side, 40. Um, I do very low weights, but very slow. Um, right, the, how long is it, what is it? How long is it, how long is too long for a single card trick? If you watch Doc Eason's bar show, and I know it's sort of a bit L and L ish, and it's got, but you, you, I've no doubt you can do a card trick for an hour and be absolutely brilliant because it'll be actually loads of card tricks. In the right situation, you could say that 
a show of card tricks sometimes feels like a card trick if it, if it goes, because some card tricks are different phases, aren't they, anyway? Um, if you're in the right situation, if you're doing a one-man show, you can easily do a 15-minute card trick, and because if it's funny, or if it's got a story to it, or if it's a thing, it, no, it can't be down here and you deal them there and that moves over there, but I think that in a close-up situation, it's as quick as you like. You know, I try and... Not too quick, actually, because I want, to, I want there to be a journey. I'm not very good at those tricks where one thing happens and it's a bit of flash paper, something disappears. I want there to be some sort of journey, even though it's for three minutes. So to me, it has to be kind of a couple of minutes, three minutes for them to go there, get there, and then get there. I will say that always. So if it's not phasey enough, I tend not to do it, which is weirdly enough why I've always struggled with extreme burn. I don't struggle with it. I do it all the time. I love it. But I find it hard to gather rapport with because it blows them away, but they're here. They're not here. So I try and talk a bit before doing it and sometimes I'll do extreme burn after I've done a slightly longer opener because that's the way I build rapport and get trust um so that yeah so I don't think there's time on it I think that you you you, may, you can feel when the audience is with you and when you're really on it and you, you're going for it like card under glass that could be a 10 minutes long cups and balls I did the other day 15 minutes you know like like long cups and balls routine because it wasn't about the trick it, we were having such a laugh and they almost get a bit bored with the balls jumping from cut to cut, which is what you want, because when you hit them with the oranges and the melon, da da, there you go. So, um, so don't worry too much about time. Start short, though. You know, I'd start with a couple of minutes and move up. Um, okay. Virgin Bionoptics, just worry it'll be another draw sitter. The reviews are making me reconsider. It's, I think it's. It's going to take work. The big learning is it's going to be like the cups and balls. You can't read the cups and balls, play with it for half an hour, and then do it. You, you have to, there's three phases to it. There's the get ready, which I think in itself takes time. Because when I was doing it earlier, I just couldn't, I didn't get there. There's a couple of issues with it that I think have to be doctored a little bit. That when you put that light on, my friend saw something straight away. He said it was just like, boom, there it is. Uh, that is an issue for me. Now, with a bit of moving around, apparently it isn't. I, I'm starting to think that in bright daylight, there may be an issue, but I might be wrong. I think it's one for a venue. In a performance situation, it's very, very different. But when you're with friends and there's heat, I think it's going to be a lot more difficult. But I think with spending time, I'm going to definitely spend time with it. It's right there and it's going to be, I'm playing with it every day, but it's going to be a, 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 a while, I think. Um, main draw right now is doing a gig for a friend in a month or so, and I'm just thinking it might be fun to do it then. But because I don't gig off and it feels like I won't use it. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're going to do that, no, every day, give yourself a 20 minutes a day, play with the thing and, and rehearse, rehearse the moves. I'll give you a tip, right? When, when you do this and when you bring it out, eye level's got to come right up. You've got that and you've got to bring it out. I would bring it out quite wide to get heat over here, if you see what I mean. That's what I'll say. That's what I found out. Uh, Seeing you're not wrong, absolutely correct. Look for some visual and easy to carry on extreme burn. Always looking for new items to carry, pack small and punch big. Yeah, well, this is tiny. And I would say again, I'll bang on about it, but for something small, level one, it's, it's great. It's so tiny, basically, but it does take, take a lot of work. Um, treats you can go and do in life now called multimedia magic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have a look at um, social media tricks, which I suppose there's a place for. Right. I just want to say a couple of things. Don't go anywhere yet. First, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to try and do this every Monday and Thursday live. I might even do more live ones because people say they prefer the live reviews. And you know what? I might as well do them live, even if there's not many people there, because then I don't have to edit. So they are more rambly, but that's fine, isn't it? Um, I will. But obviously, if I do that, I have to publish until I can get one of those flash things. I have to publish the performance footage separately. So I'll do that as well. Please do go and check out cardmagiccourse.com. I'm so proud of it. People that have signed up have loved it. Someone sent me an email today saying, um, let me just read it to you without being boring, because I know I am. Alan says, I only signed up last week. So glad I did. There you go. That'll do, wouldn't it? So <laughs> He's not disappointed. No, uh, no, nine a month, cardmagiccourse.com. Have a look at that. And please like, subscribe, share it if you like it. Tell your friends. I'm going to Blackpool. I can't wait. I'm going to be making videos every morning. It's going to be hard work, but it's going to be good fun. And please come and say hi. And it's, if I'm looking all flustered, it's probably because I'm in the middle of editing or doing something like that. So because I just appreciate you all so very much. Uh, 
Check out the Rainbow Cascade, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's great, actually, the, the walk with Rainbow Cascade. So thanks very much. Put comments after this. If you want more questions, put them in the actual comments once the video's posted, because these kind of disappear, I think, and then you can comment on the video once it's there permanently. Thanks very much um, for Nicholas uh, and Murphy's for this. Uh, I will say thanks to Vanishing because they're starting to send me stuff that isn't theirs even sometimes because they're really into what I do. So I really appreciate Vanishing Inc. sending me their stuff and the support that they give me. And all you people, uh, Al Yaj, you, you know, sent me a thing and I've bought Elastic Bands to do that trick with because it's amazing. Uh, so I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks very much. Love you, man. Yeah, brilliant. It's uh, what, a, what a lovely, fun thing to do this is. And give me some feedback on the audio. I hope it's all right. Take care. Bye-bye.